This year, we don't have some of the mandated, but all the cows are moving to November the 12th. That is a The national and state issue obliterated the local issue. People didn't know that. Slide it over. I'm gonna just put this one in here. Okay.
I'm currently wrapping up my freshman year at Virginia Tech, studying landscape architecture there. I'm happy to welcome you as we celebrate the life of Helmet Warner. I'd like to thank the college for the opportunity to gather in such a fitting setting. As I stand up here now, I find myself reminiscing about the many fond memories I have of my own. Littering his floor with 1,000 piece Lego sets on Christmas Eve, struggling to distinguish the difference between a slide tackle and a tackle during eight youth soccer games, <laughs> and almost knocking out one of his windows with a golf ball or what immediately come to mind. His soccer genes may not have been hereditary, but I believe his integrity and determination were. Although my brothers and I didn't turn out to be three Beckenbauers playing in the academy of some Premier League team, we did turn into better versions of ourselves because we were fortunate enough to be his grandchildren. I believe that everyone here can relate in some way to this. I'm willing to bet that Helmet taught y'all a hell of a lot more than soccer, things that you can apply to day-to-day -day life just as much as the pitch. We come together today because of our love and appreciation for a man we know as a coach, a friend, a colleague, a father, and in my case, a grandfather. It means a lot to me and my family that you are all here today to celebrate the impact he's had on all of us. Thank you.
I would now like to introduce you to Reverend Moses Joshua of Springfield Christian Church, who will deliver the invocation. Moses. Thank you, Linus. My name is Moses Joshua, and I've been the family minister for just over 10 years. Some of you are going 10 years, kid. We have worked for 60 years together, so you may say that. I think Coach Warner has inspired each of us in this room in multiple ways. For me, both as an immigrant to this great nation and a passionate soccer player, the stories I have heard have not only inspired me about Coach Warner, but also about his mother. The tragedy, the difficult journey they have gone from Ukraine to Poland to the British zone of Germany. Strong mother has made a strong son. This is why we celebrate Coach Warner today. Please bow your heads in our opening prayer. God of creation and creativity and community. We come together as a family, lots of friends, and rank of American College community who have witnessed and touched by the life, values, work ethics, hard work, and athletic passion of our beloved coach, Juan, who is in your eternal care. God, as we celebrate his life, that has inspired us and empowered us over the past 84 years. May the stories we hear today help us to mix tears and laughter together. May the tributes we hear today help us to carry forth the memories of Coach Helen Warner in our lives. We pray for all the people gathered here who are touched by this great soul. And we also pray for the ones who are unable to be here, but who have been part of the history making in the seminars. May you strength guide them, eternal God. At this time, we pray, and we praise you for Coach Warner, whom you have graciously, graciously received into your eternal care and presence. To all of us who are gathered here, may this moment, the connection and the people, bring us peace. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon and thank you for being here. Uh, many of you have come all the way to be here to spend this day with us, and I want you to know I appreciate it. My name is Jeff Burns. I'm the class of 87, current director of athletics here at randolph Macon. Really honored to be standing here to memorialize my coach, my mentor. Bear with me today. True pioneer of the game of soccer, and by far one of the biggest characters, personalities that I've ever known. Karen, Heidi, Dan, Linus, Dan, Ridge, on behalf of everyone here, please accept our deepest condolences. Um, your dad, your grandfather, means something to everybody in this room. We've all got a great story, and I hear many of them want to get up here and talk about it, but we're going <laughs> to do that. Uh, for me, it's very meaningful to be here. So I appreciate you guys uh, offering, but I'm also going to ask you not to get mad at me when I break into my home order voice from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> So I was lucky enough, I had a 40-year front row seat, a great relationship with Coach. I had the privilege of playing four years of soccer for him, taught me into three years of tennis, he doubled my happy hour scholarship to do that, I was appreciative of it. We were Mutt and Jeff for 14 years, great years as head coach and assistant. To be honest, since my dad's passing, in 94, by far the most important male in my life. I thought I'd spend the last 40 years here making him proud. I'd spend the next 40 honoring his legacy. He means that much to me. In high school, I had two mentors. My name is Ron Schultz, big German, played great defense, expected a lot out of us. 
didn't get a lot of love all the time, but when you did it, meant a lot. My soccer coach was a guy named Laszlo Zevich, called Mr. Z. He was part of the resistance during the uh, Hungarian Revolution. He stayed 156, came to the States, unable to speak. He ended up going to a small college called Western Maryland. And you're after helmets, uh, maybe the third time I've called a helmet in my life. <laughs> uh, he was an All American, and my coach uh, Z was an All American in Western Maryland. They could do coach uh, well. It was an odd school for me to pick to come. Those two gentlemen told me that I was going to a place that would be good for me. And looking back, I think I was probably perfectly groomed to play with Coach Turner. What he wanted was what I was able to do. It was a perfect fit for me, and I loved every freaking minute of it. My senior year, Coach became a, was going to be named the athletic director here. Pulled me into the office. He said, uh, he said I'd give you $5,000 and you stick around for a couple of years. He told me that was more than he was offered when he took the head job. I reminded him that was 1962. <laughs> My parents thought I was crazy. My uh, future in laws, they were not really that impressed. I wasn't ready to go to law school. I knew I wanted to be around with Keller. Steve, it's nice to see you. I wanted to be around Coach Nunley. I wanted to spend more time with Coach Nunley. By far the greatest decision of my life. Got my dream job here. I married the homecoming princess. <laughs> I've been working at the teaching time there. Had the opportunity to coach many of the people in this room more to me than you realize. My twins went here, and I've always had the support and guidance of my coach. Literally living my dream because of him. He took a chance on me. I hope to pay that back. Then it comes Easter, and right before that, he reaches out to me. Hey, this is helmet. I didn't know. <laughs> Glad you can call me Jeff James, which you did for the first 12 years. Of my life. He says, Vans, not sure I'm going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> if you want to stop by, it would be okay. Coach didn't ask for much. Can you tell you how important those, those days were? We talked briefly about his health, but he didn't really want to talk about it. He talked about his family, which he didn't want to talk. He talked about the grandkids all the time. We talked about the text he received. You guys need to know how important that was. He couldn't respond to every one of them. I know Heidi read many of them. I know it was a big deal to him. And he's really proud of the coaching tree, the people in this room that are still actively involved in soccer. I think giving back to the sport was important to him. And I think that was something that was drilled into all of us. I appreciate all of you guys are still doing it. So I read the Jim Galvano speech, and he says every day you should laugh. You should spend some time in thought. And you should have your emotions move to tears. And since Easter, I spent a great deal of time thinking. Many of the stories I cannot tell you until after this is over. <laughs> As you can see, I'm having a hard time with my emotions. But it wouldn't be right to memorialize this gentleman without laughter. So I'm going to try to give you some of the things that move me. All you could do is say some of the funniest things, many of which were not intentional. <laughs> I remember some of the murderisms. I used to say things on. I see Rob Trafton. That a little bit. I was a tried crazy because he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, and Helmet would yell, "He the balls are they all? Bring him in as you come." <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? Get off the balls! I try that. <laughs> School, just as long as it's in the back of the neck. It's more about hook or crook. <laughs> I, I experienced something none of you did, which is spending a week on the road with a helmet. And all the <laughs> <laughs> I experienced it myself. I'll leave the rest of that until after. <laughs> we have our trips to New Jersey. I think we've got a big contingency of wall people. Everybody in New Jersey makes an all state team. There's 1,500 people. Coach and I drive up, we're going to go, we're going to go to a happy hour and skip the dinner. 
we get there and we just change our minds. So we're one of the last people, maybe the last two people to pay. We have a table, I think there's a 1,500 people there. We were in the back corner with our backs away from the guys. Coach <laughs> walks up and these people are a little annoyed because we're standing in front of them as the uh, indication is going on and it's a simultaneous conversation. And Coach says, you know what? 25 years, you think I'd get a better table. <laughs> and as he's saying it, like, thank God, thank the Lord for the 20th year of this event. We really appreciate it. And I look at those people that are shaking their head like, what are we going to have? <laughs> when he pulled the fidget out of his coat, <laughs> and he said, "Burns, I haven't won this champion in years." <laughs> We're up in Pennsylvania. We are trying to see as many people as we can. <laughs> We're on our last trip, and we haven't eaten, so we're a little, a little hangry. He comes off in, and sits down, and he and he says, "Son, I know you want to play soccer in college." Kid says, well, I'd like to go to Virginia, Duke, or North Carolina. At which point, coach says, son, you're not 125 pounds soaking wet. Close my book and we left right after that. The crew was awesome, but he was probably equally awesome in our world. Um, legendary. Coach on one trip, we're playing in Georgia. We had four all you deals on one trip. <laughs> I know he started the shonies, and I know he put pudding on his French toast. <laughs> I know he thought of him until I made it myself, and it's quite good. <laughs> we got a pizza in a bunch of sizzle, and my favorite is a plate barbecue all you can eat place. All you can eat. No need to take barbecue with you. So I decided, all right, I'm going to take some of this barbecue home. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we, we don't have a, a refrigerator. Right now, I <laughs> <laughs> camps. Many of you guys see the work camps, went into camps. Um, I think we're, we uh, we're camp. I don't know what I work for him, but we had a move camp for towards the end. Some of those of you who work know that Coach and Comedy bring the group together in the old bookstore area, the camp center. And he said, All right, you got one question, so you got a question, you better make it a good one. All the parents are there, and we've got 25 young ladies, and one lady raised her hands like, better get going. I said, well, coach, this year we've got to be in our rooms with lights out at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Most of the parents aren't paying attention. We just heard the story, and he says, he looks at says, you know what, young lady? As long as I can get you in a sack by 10 o'clock, we'll be able to <laughs> That was the last year of our camp for women. <laughs> And my other favorite, he's not here today, but uh, many of you remember the old bikey shorts? Yeah, the, uh, snaps. Oh, snaps. It was a stretchy waistband with a minute or two. But we're not going to practice one day to say visual piece. Most front pockets are here, and the back pockets are here. The moment standing in practice, and he's got his hands. And we don't recognize it right away. And all of a sudden, Kevin McDonald falls down laughing. Come on. Coach, coach. Coach had his pants on backwards. <laughs> so he's sitting out there without even blinking. He says, Roger. Roger. You're the manager. You're the manager. You're supposed to take care of these things. <laughs> there was never a shortage of laughs with Coach. <laughs> that was his family. He kept us up to date with you guys. Everything was going on. Boy, you love soccer. You love German soccer. Many of us in this room may have a love for international soccer because of his interest in it. it made an impact on all of us. We love a good buffet. We love a couple of beers and birds. We love playing cards and taking a dollar or two from young people with no money. But he loved being around people. Coach loved people. Uh, loved a good story. He certainly would have loved being here with us today. Coach was larger than life in my world, and I always expected him to be here. Passing hurts. We read somewhere, to live in the hearts we leave behind is not to die. No one is actually dead until the ripples they cause in the world die away. Coach, we are the ripples. You dedicated your life to something bigger than yourself. It's our turn to take over. I never really said it to him. Oh, guys. Touch goodbye. I love that man. 
which rest in peace. That, that is a tough act to follow. <laughs> Sir. Good afternoon. I am Randy Nelson. I am of the class of 1973. I'm an attorney at law and recently retired four-term member of the Lynchburg City Council. I Lance, Ridge, and Zane, please accept my and my family's very sincerely and sincerest and deep condolences for the loss of your wonderful grandfather and father. I'd be asking you to share a few thoughts because my relationship and my family's relationship with Coach and their family sends back to the days when my father taught at Lynchburg College and Coach Warner was a student there. Really, my brother, Mitch, the class of 1974, Tommy, the class of 1984, David, who some of you know is half, the class of 1987, my sister-in-law, Kim, the class of 1986, and my nephew, Kim and David's son, the class of 2018, along with Dayron Mungin, who was like a mem member of my family, all of the proud Yellow Jackets, and were devoted to the Warner family and Helmut. In addition to being a Yellow Jacket, I also played with Helmut in the Richmond Adult Days. I coached in the summer camps. I worked with him in the 1970s, 80s, and 90s to organize alumni varsity matches. Gary Allen and I even coached against him and against our dear and beloved Yellow Jackets when I was the head coach at the University of Richmond Spiders varsity men's soccer. These are but a few among many perspectives that we have that make us appreciate the exceptional qualities of Coach Warner. When I was nine years old, I watched him play during his senior year at Lynchburg College. I witnessed his overwhelming physicality, athleticism, and technical supremacy on the field. To me, he moved, controlled the ball, and scored almost like a superhero character in a contemporary video game. But a helmet soccer career almost not, would not have happened except for a chance encounter when he was pursuing a management career with the local insured business. In talking with him about those days, Helmut told me that during and after high school, he lived with his mother a few miles west of Lynchburg. After each day's work, he would hitchhike home. He had an option of two routes. One route led him along a busy west highway, and the other took him through a quiet, residential neighborhood next to the Lynchburg College campus. He said, few people would pick me up if I started hitchhiking in town. They didn't want to stop. I had much better luck once I got out on the highway and there was room for them to pull over. So he preferred the short route through the neighborhood, which got him to that highway a lot faster. He said one day as he walked into the Lynchburg College campus, he heard loud cheers. He went to see what the cheering was all about. He said he watched the players 
at a Lynchburg College soccer match, and he quickly knew he could play better than most, if not all of them. So he decided to linger and ask the Lynchburg College coach, the legendary Bill Schellenberger, if he might be allowed to scrimmage with the Lynchburg team. Schellenberger invited Helmer to attend a practice session. Helmer was so impressive in that session, this is from Bill Schellenberger to me, that Schellenberger arranged for him to enroll in Lynchburg College and join the soccer team. And the rest of that is soccer history. I will paraphrase the last line of Robert Frost's renowned point, the road will not take. Truly Helmer's decision to take a route down the road less traveled by made all the difference for him and for all of us. In 1969, I became the Yellow Jacket and played four years with Coach Warner at a time when the four pillars of Randolph Macon athletic excellence were Keller, Stevens, Warner, and Webb. I recall a relatively minor event in my freshman season. Coach had given me some generous playing time in the second half of two lopsided yellow jacket events over the VMIES and the Virginia Tech Opens. Yes, that was a day and time when large university soccer programs fared poorly in turn of making soccer. Our next major contest was against Wayne and America. At the end of our practice on the afternoon of the full Avenue American game, Coach told me to meet him in his office three hours before the match. He didn't tell me why. My first thought was, wow, I recently, recently been playing pretty well in the second string position. He was ready to put me in at the start. And he wants to talk to me before the match to give me a few the <laughs> when I eagerly went to his office the next afternoon, he smiled. Thank you for coming by. Then he handed me the keys to his car. He gave me two one dollar bills. He told me to drive to the grocery store and get a two dozen hot oranges, slice them up, and put them on ice in the cooler. I have time for it. <laughs> I complied and felt mentally foolish about my grandiose ideations. Sometime later, I must have the courage to ask Coach why he needed me to go to the grocery store and get the for the halftime break. So to reply, Randy, and I can't imitate him. <laughs> Randy, I need to know my players. There are many ways to measure a player's dedication to our team. There are many ways to know the player's concerns and more about their personal ego, image, and status for about our team. I never trust anyone to do big things if I can't be sure they are willing to take responsibility for mediocre and ordinary things, like going to the grocery store and getting oranges and slicing them for our halftime break. I never forgot that. I was always grateful for that lesson. Coach taught personal character and responsibility. After each year's regular season, Coach encouraged Jack and players to join him on an adult league team in the Richmond and Tidewall areas. We drove to the playing fields in private cars. I always rode with Coach because he was so interesting. I remember one such match shortly after the Chinese New Year in 1970. As he was driving us back to Ashland, he randomly asked, Hey, do you know what animal is the Chinese lunar zodiac symbol for 1970? Nobody responded. He then said, a dog. It's the year of the dog. So you know what that means. Again. He said, oh, come on, man. 
The year of the dog means that Randolph League is going to have a great soccer season in the fall of 1970 because I'm mutt. <laughs> 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 I'm mutt is gone. In this year of the dog, I'm going to have to give up. I don't know how. Yes, in his humor, he was so deprecated. He could laugh at himself. My brother David, who many of you, as I said, know as Hap, later went to law school and has since practiced law in Charleston, West Virginia. David regrets that he cannot be here today, but he asked me to tell you two things. He said, There is no dog more loyal than a mutt. And truly, how much academic money did he ran out of in 1962? There has been no one more loyal to this college, to his players, to his families, than Bob Warner. They can further relate to me that after he began interacting in West Virginia coaching, <coughs> once his son Peter was playing in travel and coaching the youth soccer teams, David was amazed that almost every veteran coach who learned that David had played at Randolph Macon for Helmut Warner would smile and beam and tell David their favorite mud story. That mud was beloved by all in places that few would suspect, including the remote hills and dusty hollows in West Virginia. There are many lessons, inspirations, and memories that coach instilled in all of us. There is one indelible mark he unknowingly gave me and for the few. It relates to the practice of smoking a cigar or a pipe on the team bus, <laughs> or in the cars when you're going to some of those adult meetings, and on the sideline before and at matches. After years of smelling that cigar smoke and that pipe, during and after matches. I always associated the aroma of the aroma with the preparations to lace up my soccer cleats. <laughs> Don the yellow lemon seed, the lemon grind. Go through the warm ups and take the pitch <laughs> as a yellow pack. It does be great, a wonderful Pavlovian response to me and on my psyche. <coughs> To this day, whether I'm walking down the street, sitting at an outdoor restaurant table, or anywhere, if I smell smoke from someone's cigar or pipe, my instincts and psychological reaction transports me. It gives me an unavoidable expectation and feeling the coach is right there. And it conjures up in me a form of joy of preparing to play a match under his unequal guidance and direction. That was always a comforting and satisfying feeling, and it all went to me. I think I probably overstayed my invitation. But in concluding my remarks, I again share the words that I expressed to you, and Jeff, and others several weeks ago. Coach was impressive in every way. As a coach, a teacher, an athlete, leader, friend, family man, mentor, conversationalist, and person. He had a magnificently positive impact on all who were privileged to know him. What an honor and pleasure to have been one. He was a true legend, and his conquests of monumental challenges were inspirational. We were all blessed. Thanks, Coach. Thank God for sharing him with us and with so many others.
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Matt Bitsko. I had the pleasure of playing for coach from 1990 to 1994. I'm going to stop real quick and say I promised that the previous two speakers and me did not consult with this at all, but I think you're going to see some really kind of amazing uh, uh, rhymes and, and things that are, that are pretty complete with this. I want to start off by thanking Heidi, Dan, and Karen for, for inviting me to be here, for allowing me to be up here. Of course, when we talked about it last week, uh, I was excited, I was humbled, um, and I was scared, right? Scared for a couple reasons, but uh, because Coach is legend, as we talked about. Thankfully, we have this as just a summary for what that could be. But it also humbled me because Coach is one of the few guys that we really see who, no joke, like everybody would have wanted to be out here. We all have the stories, right? And we could go on forever, and we will, right? But that's, you know, there's very, very few people that have touched so many people, just the people in this room, the people out here. All of us wanted to be out here. Yeah, that's a little piece on coach. The coach is a coach. I'm going to try to make sure I get loud enough here. Coach is a coach. Um, for 99% of us, coach was our last soccer coach. Right? Unless your name's Henny or Sims or Trafton, some of them, right? He was, for 99% of us, he was our last soccer coach. And we, each, each of us as individuals, we played for you know, 10, 12, 14 years, worked hard, had some great coaches. That's not great coaches, right? But when we wanted to come to the college environment, we had high hopes and we had high expectations. But that's the thing, that's the first thing to say about coach. He met. It was such a high bar, and we couldn't have ever thought of having a better coach for us. Right? That's the first piece about how coach was just an amazing coach. So I say that not to be sentimental, I say that to say that's that's what the bar was, and that's what coach always did. So I sat down over the last week, as I'm sure most of us did, and if you haven't, it's, it's pretty interesting to do this, to write down some, some phrases or words that come to mind when you think of coach. And, you know, they're, they're at the very least um, very uh, comprehensive. So coach, he was a legend, ultra competitive, okay? so outspoken, I think is a fair way to put it, uh, demanding. You know, he put in work, he expected that of us. But then on the other side of it, he was engaging, like you all heard, and funny, right? Um, he brought so many things and trusting in the relationships that he could build. And in his own way, I laughed when I wrote this, but in his own way, coach could be loving. Of course he could be, but when you saw that competitive guy on the sideline, those are the first thing to look at. <laughs> so, so dynamic, dynamic is one word we're gonna say for coach. Uh, if you knew him, you know, on all facets of his life, if you got to experience that dynamic. Okay. So let me, let me give you a couple of stories for that. So, number one, my, the spring of my junior year, um, I, I got in a, you know, accident, had this injury, wasn't too sure if I was going to be able to get back in what capacity in the, in the fall. Coach, of course, very, very gracious, all over the place, I'm going to get doctors, all my family, all this stuff. So, uh, that's one aspect of coach. Well, my senior year fall season, one of the many mantras that Coach had about me, and I can't do the voice, right? But, you know, let's go. I remember he used to be skinny and fast and knew how to mark a guy. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> right? Just always on you. Just always. So it's like, hey, Coach, I, I thought you showed me the love in the spring. What, you know, it just. <laughs> one of the many mantras. <laughs> well, we all have them, right? So I'm going to tell you, we all have mantras of how Coach could be honest. Another one, this one started off seriously, but you know, there's some people in this room, junior year, away, Kansas City basketball game. And there was some bad decisions made. Uh, by myself and a couple others in here, I will not name them. Um, we saw Coach and Jeff there. Um, well, we got politely invited into Coach Warner's office that next day. This was not a very fun one. Because Coach was very clear and very specific and very stern, almost with an iron fist, about how our choices and our behaviors were not acceptable, not only for a randolph making student, but as a representative of his team. And right? so, message received, and that's the piece that Coach could bring when we needed it, had to bring when we needed it. 
So you have that, and then you also have the last one I'll throw in there is, you know, some of us guys uh, had, a, had a department in Conrad our sophomore year. And, you know, we were having some fun late at night, and these, these are the Conrad windows that were floor to ceiling, right? And let's just say something happened where the whole window just shattered and just fired. <laughs> Maybe we already had a strike or two against us. We really did not know what to do. But the next morning, what do you do? You go to the coach. <laughs> And that time he did not chew us out. He didn't, long story short, five minutes later, he was driving us down Route 1 in his car so we could make a down payment at Ace Class. No, it's not that. You've got to help us in a lot of different ways. So, so in a way, obviously, Coach was like a second father to me, to us, to all of us. Like, that's a role that he could always do. Um, you know, some college coaches might act like wardens. Some college coaches might be like the leader of the circus, where they're only really happy, you know, if the animals and the monkeys and the, and the clowns are really doing their job right. <laughs> but, but Coach, he wasn't like that. You know, as, as much as he was competitive and, and he wanted to win more than anybody, and he demanded out of himself and us, right, his relationship and his experience with us was never dictated by the wins and losses. And that's just, a, just one of many things that are so special for that coach, especially for the Apple level and, and, the, and the, the influence he had across the state, across the nation. I will pause for a second say that is ironic. I'm going to contradict myself because we all know Coach Julie did love the 1993 team both more than any of them. Only time I was going to be able to do that. <laughs> we'll meet outside. <laughs> so, so coach loved the 1993 team, but there we go. We'll, we'll talk. There'll be plenty of time to talk later. So, the last one on that point about coach, you know, he, he was unique in this way, and I think people have said things that were similar. He wanted to get to know us, but he also allowed us to get to know him which was a little bit novel and weird, and we only really knew it when it was later. My quick story on that one, this was our first and second game of freshman year, and we were, we were kind of over down there, and we were driving back from Virginia Beach, and of course we had the magic bus, the coach had his, um, his, his car, he was sitting by that. And I think it was Bernie, he said, hey, well, why don't you guys head back with coach? So myself and Thrill and Andy Chucks just went back with coach, and what we didn't realize what was happening is even in that first trip, Coach started telling us about his childhood and, and what happened before and how he got here and what so his teenage years were like and everything else. So, yeah, of course that's a thing, but he was doing this with freshmen, our first meeting, our first home games, right? So that was just a start. We weren't like seniors that he was just kind of like trying to say something before we all go off. Like, but that's how Coach was. So I'm not saying that that... Um, that, that would never happen today, because I don't even think that really happened a lot back then. But my point is, I think all of us are very, very grateful that coach happens to us. The last piece here, this one, I don't know. So, coming to Randolph-Macon and, and playing under coach, it was not only a benefit for me, but for my whole family my extended family, right? It was amazing. Coach Warner, 43 years here, right? You guys know it. I'm preaching to the choir here. But here, here's something I thought about that was even a little bit more amazing. So I, I met Coach probably fall of 1989. Great Valley High School, send the announcement, come down to the guidance counselor's office, and I see two guys that knock, knock out my jet. And you realize we spend more of the next four years with them, right? So... That sort of piece was really interesting, but Coach, and the way that he had this relationship with me and the way he's had it with all of us in this room. So I had Coach for 34 years, right? Again, not a lot of people get to say that about their coaches. So Megan had him for 43, and then some, right? I got to have him for 34. I could go around this room, and you guys could all give you the decades and times that he continued to give to us long, long past our time here. Coach got to be really good friends with my father. Started as soon as we got here, really built throughout the years. And it even got a little better after that. I mean, it just kind of kept going. One, one story I'll share with a little bit of humility is my dad, ever since I was little, he would go on these golf trips with his friends. And he almost talked about everything else. 
And but the rule was my brother and I could never go until we were 21. So we graduated at 21. Hey, Dad, and you're waiting for that invite. Coach Warner got invited before me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Coach had to like actually say, yeah, okay, it's all right, that comes down too. Right? And then we did years, 10, 15, 20 years. Jeff would bring him down and go down with Kabor. You know, I'd be sitting there, and this is the other rhythm of the story. You know, Coach would be sitting there with my dad, with my uncle Gary, playing poker with my brothers, brothers in law, cousins, stealing our money. Listen <laughs> to Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash. Right? So that's one of the final, that's not the final, but that's just a memory that I, I could not go without sharing. So, for Heidi, Karen, Dan, thank you so much for having me up here, for allowing me to be someone who tried to uh, be representative of the 1990s and such. Um, and I thank you guys for sharing your father with me, for all of us, sharing your father with us, and I would say that to your mother as well. Um, and in that sharing is what we found. We found a very, very dynamic person and coach. And then we had the guy who was a second father and such the role model that really crafted us in to the men we all are today. So thank you. come from so far, um, and it just means a lot to me and to Dan and to Karen um, and my children and our family, and I know hopefully this day is special to all of you, too. Um, thank you, Linus and Moses and Jeff and Randy and Matt. I think you're back there. There you are. Um, I appreciate all the words that you all shared today. Um, it means a lot to me. And it was also fun to learn some new things. So, you know, <laughs> I hope that I'll get to learn more about these things too. So Dan and I are looking forward to all the stories. Um, I'd like to begin by asking everybody a question, if I could. How many people here have ever heard my dad give a speech? Okay, so not everybody, but a lot, a lot. So if you know it was an experience, <laughs> and you never knew exactly how it was going to go. Um, he was a character. <laughs> and it's going to help me out with my pictures. Oh, you're at the end. Okay. So we'll just take a quick technical intro. <laughs> yeah, I know. There you go. There he is, giving speeches. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I know a lot of short one in the middle. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, when I was preparing for today, I was nervous. Um, and I actually dug out a file of his old speeches to try to find some inspiration in the man's words himself. <laughs> And as I read through what I will tell you was a solid gold walk down memory lane, I was reminded of two things I know to be true about my father. <laughs> One is he connected with people through, a lot of times, through humor. Um, speaking of his sense of humor, I did also find in there an extensive collection of risky and risque jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and as I read his speeches from the 70s, I realized this was not a random filing error. <laughs> he was a character. And we're here because we feel connected to my dad. He formed strong connections, strong connections with all the people around him in whatever <laughs> setting he was in. He had a lot of heart. He cared about us. He made us better and stronger, and we responded to that. He celebrated our achievements and supported us in our setbacks. When my husband Lauren passed away five years ago, who was at my house 
bright and early the next day, just be with us. He was not a morning person. <laughs> my dad, that's him that morning with my youngest son, Rich. I'm not sure what they were doing. They were playing some kind of game. And he brought a ridiculously large bag. But he was there. He was there. The second thing I was reminded of as I read his speeches was that he was either there to make a point, to tell you how to do something, or to inspire you. There were detailed notes from his coaching clinics where he taught defensive strategies like how to be in hand, anybody, um, or how to teach kids fundamentals like dribbling and scoring. And I will say, as his daughter, I can certainly relate to being told how to go. Mm -hmm. The speeches he gave to inspire are my favorites, though, except for maybe the ones from athletic department roasts of people like Hugh Stevens and Ted Keller. Uh, two, yeah, but he did inspire so many people through his vision for what soccer would become in the U.S. Even 50 years ago, he was apparently talking to many groups of people about his multi-point plan for soccer. He focused on things like developing top coaching capabilities, having year-round youth play, regional and international competition, Developing strong national programs and standards, and having American pro soccer with American heroes that our kids could get excited about. He gave a lot of keynote addresses at sports banquets, apparently, where he was trying to inspire high school kids. And let's be clear, this was also him recruiting. Always was he recruiting. In 1981, at the Benedictine High School soccer banquet, he said, You have to become the best soccer players possible. Ask for a soccer ball for Christmas so you can juggle and work with the ball yourself. Most of your goals are too low. Most of us think we are good if we make a local all-star team. But how do you compare with the average player in Germany or Brazil? <laughs> this is my yardstick to see how long <laughs> Dad, my mother, and my Oma my dad's mother. They inspire me all the time. They all had major challenges to overcome in life. And I have two, and I'm sure many of you have that as well. And remembering this helps me find strength and resilience in life even now. And speaking of my mother, she put up with him for 53 <laughs> years. Right? Dad loved mom. They were a team, <laughs> and he appreciated and benefited from her support. There were so many things that Karen, Dan, and I learned from our dad. For example, at that time, I wondered how many little kids in Hanover County could beat their dad at backgammon. Um, but more importantly, he, had, he worked hard, and he instilled a really strong work ethic in us from a young age. He put us at work in the soccer camp snack bar. We knew that if we could get A's in school, we were going to get A's. These were not our best. It was never a question in our minds that we were going to go to college. Because his work was soccer, and he worked so hard, soccer was a part of our lives all the time growing up. We were reminiscing the other day about how we were always at games, in the athletic department, at his camps, all over this campus. I remember being in trouble riding my big wheel down the steps at Mary Ranch. <laughs> he was always coming home from a recruiting trip, a conference, or a coaching clinic. Dad had so many soccer ranking committee calls from his recliners on Sunday nights. I can still remember the calling card number one like 30 years ago. 257-157-2534-6323. You probably all remember, and it's been sitting here already today, that you have like, some saying or mixed metaphor that you have that didn't make sense all the way. Um, you might have called them Warnerisms or Mutterisms, as it's been said. 
As children, we were constantly irritated by him saying, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. My personal favorite, though, is luck is a skill. I mean, it is. <laughs> I guess he felt you could be good at being lucky. As I've read many, many texts from former players and friends who so appreciate it so much, and I read over all the speeches. I think maybe I knew what he meant. He knew his players well, their strengths, their weaknesses. He devised tactics that maximized what he had to work with. And he would seize opportunities, especially those that took advantage of his opponent's weaknesses, because he studied those two. So I think luck as a skill comes down to hard work, teamwork, preparation and strategy, and seizing opportunities. And yes, there are shining sparks of luck that come when you believe. I thought I would close with a few final words from my dad. First, as I was preparing for today, I found a draft of a book he had started to write about soccer in Virginia. And in the foreword, he wrote these words. How fortunate can one person be to do one's entire life that which is a joy, and try to share it with those around him. You can all start that. And one last one. I told you we were going to come back to this. If you were there the night that my dad was inducted into the Virginia Sports Hall of Fame, which I'm sure you are, um, you might remember I made a video for him with a nice celebration. Some of you might remember. <laughs> that was quite a night. <laughs> Here's a quick clip of my dad sharing what it meant to him that his friend and former players were there with him. If he were here today, he might say something like this. <laughs> <laughs> what you didn't hear because we were laughing was he said these guys are special to me Heidi and mean the world to me that everyone's come from so far all across the country and then beyond today um, and it means the world to me that you all are all here today to celebrate his life thank you for being here the recorded stories and I hope you'll please join us
Anybody, can you hear me? <laughs> the men's soccer players that ever played here for coach, we'd like to get a team, a team picture. We'd like to get a picture of everybody. Before you leave, I know a couple of you got some events you got to run to. I don't know whether we can use these seats. I've got the photographer coming in with a ladder. We get a top, he's right there. Dwayne, thank you. So I would say, Dwayne, first section here, all right? Oh, well, let's go put them over here, Jeff. Right, well, we said we're going to put you over there. So everybody, we need to do that right now. So I'm going to put you up there. So all men soccer tackles, please. Hey, Randolph Megan soccer alumni, just for one picture, please make your way over to this side of the room. See the photographer standing up there? Shiny. I can see him shiny from here. Yeah, I see it. All right, this is a once in a lifetime shot. Get your ass over there and then get the hell out of here.
Thank <laughs> you. 